Hi, my name is Doug Grezebeck, and I'm with Integrated Solutions Management. As an IT service management consulting firm, we assist our clients in implementing business processes and systems, uh, oftentimes in the IT service management space. And one of the things that we constantly wrestle with with our clients is the defining of the category and subcategory model. That is, the way that incidents, problems, changes, and requests are classified within an IT service management system. So what I'd like to do is to spend the next few minutes to share with you some of the objectives and some of the considerations for you to think about as you go about defining your incident classification scheme. So let's start by talking about the primary objectives of the incident classification scheme. The primary objective of the incident management process itself is restoration of service. So the primary objective for the incident classification scheme is getting that situation, that incident, that ticket into the hands of those that are best positioned to restore service as quickly as possible. So when architecting and laying out your category and subcategory model, it's important to think in terms of how you can get that quickly to the teams that can best restore service. The second objective is management reporting and metrics. What are the things that as an organization you're going to use to measure yourselves and that you can use for continuous improvement so that at the end of the day the IT organization is better serving the enterprise? What is the incident classification scheme? Well, it is a category and it is a subcategory and at times we even had clients who due to reporting needs would go down to what we would call a sub subcategory. Typically industry standard for lack of a better term is a two-level classification scheme of category and subcategory. But again we have had instances where for business reasons we'll go ahead and take that to a third level. So when we talk about categories this is the types of assets that you manage within your IT organization. So you're talking about enterprise infrastructure, enterprise software, desktop software, um, mobile devices. These are examples of types of categories and really for no matter how large your enterprise is, no matter how vast the services and products that you produce are, you should have no more than 15 or 16 categories within your classification scheme. The next level down, the subcategory, are what are the things that you need to report on? Okay, so what do you need to, to know? I need to know how many of these. Okay, the quantitative metrics that you're going to look at on a regular basis for where your incidents are falling within the IT services and infrastructure that you provide. And again, as I mentioned in the objectives, one of the primary things is having, where appropriate, a mapping of your subcategories to a specific assignment group so that where appropriate we can auto route those incidents for quicker triage and quicker service restoration. So we know what the classification scheme is. It's a category and a subcategory designed to again assist us in the routing of incidents to the appropriate group as well as our reporting and metrics needed after the fact. What the classification scheme is not is the place to record or capture diagnosis, cause, or resolution information. It's also not the spot to capture the specific asset or service being impacted. The resolution or cause code is the place where we want to capture those things that indicate what we did to restore service. Did we reboot a server? Did we replace a switch? Did we make a modification to a piece of application code? Those are the resolution codes and those need to stay at that level in that attribute. We can use that from a reporting perspective with our classification model, but the classification model or scheme itself should not attempt to capture resolution codes. Additionally, we have a configuration item or a CMDB that's going to have all the CIs, both services and infrastructure that we are managing, and each incident within 
a, an IT service management system should have a CI attached to it. So again, we now have another piece of information that we do not want to capture within the classification scheme, but is invaluable to us when it comes to reporting. We understand that finding the classification scheme is not always easy. Uh, it's a, it takes a collaborative effort between various areas within the business to understand those things that are important from a reporting perspective and the methodology and the mindset that you have to routing your incidents. But at the end of the day, if you stick with the, the objectives that we talked about earlier, it'll make your life a lot easier. So that said, what can we offer in terms of some examples for you? So I want to spend the rest of this session giving you just a few examples of various categories and category models that might help spur your thinking and get you moving in the right direction towards defining your own incident classification scheme. Looking across industry at some sample category models, you'll see a number of very uh, distinct differences based on industry, but also striking similarities between them. You see things like enterprise systems or PC or desktop hardware and desktop software. And, and as we talked about earlier, the asset, we're looking at general asset groupings. Um, and there's a few outliers to that. When you look at and you see here where we have uh, system access and password reset, as we move forward and see things, a number of different enterprise application groupings when we look at wholesale distribution for financial, HR, ERP, uh, purchasing. So again, very similar groupings, but distinct to a given business. We look at the federal government and see where they've got client applications, workstation hardware, workstation OS, very similar in a lot of ways there. Um, and one of the other ones that we see here is the IT management system. So the systems that actually manage our business from an IT service management perspective, uh, not just the, uh, the ticketing system, if you will, but other applications that support IT operations uh, would fit into their own category potentially. Security is another one where uh, that's a category that's often uh, represented that may or may not have uh, physical services or assets associated with it. Uh, facilities we see underneath the hospital category, a key part of their operations is ensuring that their facilities are fully operational um, from an incident management and restoration of service uh, perspective. And then on to manufacturing. So as we can see, a number of different uh, industries, a number of different business models, um, but at the end of the day, we see striking similarities at the highest level category within the classification scheme. So as we stated earlier, the subcategory is effectively the level at which we want to capture our metrics or capture our reporting. So if we take a look at just a few, I'm not going to go through all of these in, in terms of the categories that we just looked at, but if you look at a category for, say, enterprise hardware and software, this is where we're going to see things like Windows Server, Linux, Unix, AS400, uh, VMware. Okay, so we're going to see the various enterprise hardware and software subcategories or components that we're going to go ahead and want to report on. If we look at sales and marketing applications, this is where we would see e-commerce and Salesforce, or our CRM system. And finally, we look at our enterprise applications around business, accounts receivable, accounts payable, payroll, our financial analytics. So as you can see, the subcategory is a drill down one level deeper uh, from the category model. And this is where we're gonna look at distinct things. If I see that I've got a number of uh, incidents coming in, let's say on the payroll system, because we all know the payroll system is the most important one to each of us, uh, then I may have to go and do some root cause analysis, open up a problem, try to figure out what's going on there. Um, and by having the appropriate category, subcategory model, my classification scheme, uh, it's going to streamline that process and make it that much easier for me. So in summary, when you're defining your incident classification scheme or your category model, always keep in mind our two primary objectives. What can we do to route the, the incident as quickly as possible to the right group or the right individual? And what do we need to manage ourselves on? What are we going to report on as part of our overall IT service management system? 
So focus on those two things and keep it simple. Do not over-engineer your category model. Keep in mind you've still got um, your resolution codes, you've still got your CIs, not everything needs to be in the classification scheme. So look at your high-level collection of assets and then look at those things again that you want to report on. And I will stress if you're not going to utilize the information from a reporting or metrics perspective, do not collect it. You're going to create overhead in the system and burden on the operators of the system if you're collecting information and data that you ultimately don't use. So keep it simple. Then as necessary, if you need to add more detail, you can always do that as part of your continuous improvement. But on the front end, I always caution, keep it simple. Hopefully this has been helpful and will be of assistance in defining your category and subcategory model, your incident classification scheme. If you'd like to talk to us in more detail, you can email us at info at ism4it.com or visit our website at ism4it.com. Thank you very much and have a nice day.